G'day everybody, welcome to ABCPE, the site where we try and make VCEPE as easy as ABC. We're moving on to chronic changes now, and in particular today we're going to talk about the chronic respiratory responses to aerobic training. This is the second last dot point on the state of design, guys, so well done. You are definitely getting there. First thing I'm going to talk about is what is a chronic response and what it is, it's a long-term physiological change in the body that occurs due to the fact that you've been training. These chronic responses are going to help you improve your performance, but the one thing to remember is that it is going to be specific to what type of training you do. So Usain Bolt there, who's one of the PE teacher's favorite, he is going to have anaerobic adaptations in his body because he predominantly does anaerobic training. On the right hand side, uh, Choge, he is going to have aerobic adaptations because he's going to do his aerobic training. It's important to remember that these chronic responses that have come about as a result of aerobic training are trying to do three things. Trying to uptake more oxygen, trying to transport more oxygen, and try and utilize more oxygen um, from the outside environment so we can get that higher aerobic ATP resynthesis at the muscles, which will delay our anaerobic contributions so we don't succumb to those fatiguing metabolic byproducts, in particular the hydrogen ions, which we hate, which will lead to improved performance and hopefully we'll get that gold medal. Just a little diagram here. Have a look at Homer Simpson. He is craving that hamburger. Now, Kipchoge or an aerobic athlete, what they are craving is not the hamburger, it is that oxygen. In this video today, we're talking about respiratory chronic responses. So what they do is they help us intake O2 from the environment and then we've got to diffuse that O2. Here's a quick list of the respiratory chronic adaptations that we'll talk about today. First one I'm going to talk about is tidal volume. Tidal volume is the total amount of air breathed in and out per breath. Um, and this will increase with training. It increases mainly due to the fact that our intercostals and our diaphragms become strong as a result of training, which means we can now breathe in more air because we, we can open up our lungs that little bit more. Our respiratory rate at rest is actually gonna decrease a little bit due to the fact that our tidal volume has increased. Finally, we've got ventilation, which is you know the big dog in this area, and ventilation is equal to tidal volume times respiratory rate, total amount of air breathed in and out per minute, and a trained athlete will have a higher max ventilation. You can see on that graph here that from rest and through submax activity, it's basically the same due to our increased in tidal volume, but as we get into our max activity, our ventilation will increase because our tidal volume has increased. And an increase in ventilation means we get more oxygen into the body, which means we can then hopefully use that at a later point into our muscles. Here's a question from last year's VCAR exam. I'll give you a second to have a crack at that. Only a quarter of the state got this one right. And the answer to that one was that after training, your tidal volume is higher and your respiratory rate will therefore be lower at those submax intensities. Of course, if we move up to max intensities, our tidal volume will be higher, our respiratory rate will be the same, which means we have a higher ventilation. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the pulmonary diffusion. So on the left-hand side of that diagram, we've got the lungs, and at the end we have these things called alveoli. The alveoli is the area of the lungs, the end point of the lungs, where the oxygen is gonna diffuse from the lungs, hopefully into the capillaries of the bloodstream. We're basically um, passing the baton on of that oxygen. So as we train, we get an increase in size of this alveoli and therefore greater diffusion. More diffusion means more O2 into the blood, which means we're gonna be able to get more O2 to the muscles, hopefully. So this shopping cue here is meant to represent the alveoli increasing in size. And as the alveoli increase in size, think of it as uh, the supermarket opening out more checkouts. If more checkouts are open, more people can go through the supermarket and pay for their goods. If more alveoli are in line with the capillaries, then more oxygen can go through and diffuse into the bloodstream. 2011 VCAR exam. I'll give you a second to have a crack at that. So 
So with 11B, increased diffusion is gonna mean more oxygen can get into the blood. That is the most important thing. Um, still, a, a, an area that people are struggling with, so if you can get that, you're gonna be on top of the game. And then this link, we haven't talked about the rest of these chronic adaptations, but if you can link why more O2 into the blood is good, and basically it means that we can now transport more oxygen to the muscle, and then eventually we can utilize more oxygen at the muscle, which means more aerobic ATP. Okay guys, that's chronic respiratory responses to aerobic training. I uh, hope you enjoyed, please hit us up at abcpe.com. If you have any questions, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Also, we've got some online revision seminars coming up. We'd love to see you there. You can book those ones online also. Thanks guys.